Travel the two-lane highway that leads to North Carolina's Outer Banks, and you'll soon find yourself at the edge of the gorgeous Atlantic Ocean. And if your timing's right, you just might catch surf filmmaker Logan Marshall making his morning surf check. For Marshall, growing up in this unique beach community has been an idyllic upbringing. Growing up here is cool because when I grew up, it wasn't, I mean, it was busy, but it wasn't as busy as it is now. And I don't know, I think things are just different as when we were kids, I'm sure you go even 10 years back and they're even more different, but I feel like we had a lot of freedom to just kind of roam around Mania. And they tromp through the woods over there and um, <laughs> made a mess down at the docks. <laughs> and then as they got a little bigger, they would go down to the Pioneer um, Theater. They would go jump off the bridge. They were all over the place. They never stopped. He, he's always outdoors. He, he was always exploring. Um, he's the reason if you go down towards the mother vine, there's no trespassing signs everywhere because he would just use their, use their yards, go to the sound, walk out to Banana Island, you know, that kind of thing. Scaling Andy Griffith's fence, all that fun stuff. It was just really free. There's always something to do and your friends are all kind of pretty close, so everyone was hanging out all the time. As Marshall matured, he gravitated toward photography, purchasing an inexpensive waterproof camera to experiment with. I got into shooting surf photos probably when I was like 12 or 13 because of Clark Little. I, uh, I saw his videos and stuff of him doing the crazy shore break. I thought it was cool. And that was also the same time GoPros were on the rise. So I got like a $20 waterproof camera from Walmart and shot photos on that and then eventually got a GoPro and shot photos on that. It just kind of happened, really. Um... I feel like it kind of started, on, we had a vacation in like 2015, and on the way home, he made a phone movie, on I, iMovie, I think, of our vacation. And it just kind of started there. He had taken pictures and video and added music. Recognizing his son's interest in making videos, Logan's father and he began their own web series, Dad vs. Son, where they would compete in selecting winners from college football game day. As it turns out, shooting and editing were just the thing that Marshall's creative mind had been looking for, and it wasn't long before the hook was completely set. It kind of was like a domino effect from there. I shot a photo that won a contest here, and the Arts Council and Sir Flores reached out to me about making a film, and so I made it on Nathan and Jesse Hines and then Lynn Shell, who I worked for. We started shooting, I had the idea of telling generations and having one kid that's like in his late teenage years and early 20s, then having Jesse Hines who has already been through everything. I think he was 38 at the time, but he was retired and started his own business and has kids at this, at this point. So um, he was the next generation. And then I wanted to show Lynn, who was 67 at the time, just three generations on the Outer Banks and tried to tell that as a story. So it was just shooting on the weekends and hoping there were waves. Um, there weren't a ton of good waves in the film, but I think the interviews were all right. <laughs> With his first effort under his belt, Marshall set about finding the one thing every aspiring surf photographer and filmmaker needs, surfers to shoot with. Started shooting with Bo Rainer. Um, he was up and coming at the time. He had won a national title. He was on the junior US surf team. Um, super successful for someone his age. He moved back to the Outer Banks and we started filming together and it was just kind of like a win-win situation for us both. He, for his career, he needs footage and for what I do, I obviously need footage and having a good surfer to film is the double win. I think for me, the reality of it kicked in when he asked to skip school and uh, Big Wednesday and um, yeah, we let him. And, and we knew he was with uh, some folks that we, we trusted and, and that are good folks. And uh, he walked in the door after that and he just stood in our, in our doorway of our bedroom. And I've got chills thinking about it. He, uh, he says, this is the best day of my life. And uh, he, that's kind of when it all started. And it, it was at that moment I was like, okay, this is real. He's got this going on. I have no idea where it's going to go. And I was kind of not going to school as much because I was filming with every moment kids were coming into town and people were wanting to film so yeah I had a teacher that fought for me and she helped me and my parents helped me 
get in a situation where I could graduate early. And I graduated early and went to Hawaii with a group of East Coast kids. And yeah, from then on, it was, I had time to travel and these kids needed a filmer and I wanted to film. So it was just a, it was a good deal. We both helped each other out. We traveled to a lot of cool places and filmed a lot. Now free to pursue his passion, it wasn't long before Marshall and friends ended up at the Holy Grail of surfing, the North Shore of Oahu. It's in, it's intense, just like growing up here and filming here. Um, there's like four or five local guys that film and you go there and you step out onto the beach and there's like a hundred people in the water and 200 cameras on the beach. It's kind of, you kind of just, it doesn't feel the same. It's, it's just super different. Um, and it's cool, like when pipe's good and there's a lot of people surfing and some of the best servers in the world are getting really good waves in front of you. It's just cool. It makes filming really easy because you're getting really good footage just sitting there. While Hawaii may have been exciting, it was also a very different scene from the placid Outer Banks. Yeah, I've heard stories about people getting snapped on and told to move and all that. Um, I personally haven't really had it happen to me. Um, there's just tension just when you're sitting on the beach and they start filling in next to you and you're starting to get packed in. It's like, it's weird. It's, it's very different. I'm, I'm glad it's not like that here. Since surfing typically takes place in unique and exotic locations, the teenager found himself swept up in a whirlwind of travel. El Salvador was really cool. Um, I went on that trip with the Marshalls from California, Jake Marshall and Nick Marshall and then Micah Kanner. Uh, and that was just cool seeing a completely different culture that I hadn't seen before. Um, and a country that's been through a lot and recently. It's weird, it was kind of like looking into a history book. It was really interesting, but that was a really cool place. The wildlife there was cool, like bulls were walking around and stuff, so that was cool to see. Thanks to his youthful approach and ever developing videography skills, Marshall's work caught the eye of Chad Davis, director of the Carolina Surf Film Festival. Uh, yeah, the first time I remember seeing one of his films on on the internet, you know, and I contacted him and I was like, dude, we're doing a giant, we did the Surf in the City down at the Charleston Music Hall at the time. And I was like, would you care if we put your film in this, you know, in this showing that we're doing and then it'll be up for like the awards on the whole thing, you know, for the whole year of our screenings and everything. And he was like, yeah, he was like, where's it gonna be? And I was like, Charleston. And I was like, don't worry, you know, I'd love for you to be there, but don't make, you know, if you don't go crazy. And next thing I know, his whole family was at the theater coming in and the first time I'd met his mom and dad, super nice people. I mean, just, you couldn't ask for a nicer family. It was unbelievable. Marshall's skills have continued to evolve and his latest film, Out Front, Outer Banks in Sea, was featured on wave forecasting website Surfline and won best soundtrack at the 2021 Surf Alors Film Festival. But as much as he enjoys making surf films, he also sees the limitations of the form. There's so many people making surf content now and Unfortunately, surfing is really limited. Like, you can only get so creative with someone that's surfing because you're having to deal with what the wave is doing, where the person is. Chances are where you are, there's no backdrop or anything like that. I feel like the only way to develop any sort of style is to show dynamic through movements, whether that be music or color type of cuts, if it's faster or slower. I don't know, it's, it's, such, it's something that you have to get really creative with and it, is hard because it's not something you can plan out. It's it's not like you can say, oh yeah, I'm gonna have this be that and that be this because then I can promise you it'll go the opposite way. These days, Marshall spends his weekends working as a wedding photographer and freelancer, holding down a steady gig to support his art habit. His parents have confidence their son will be just fine pursuing his creative path. He's never been a kid that just sat in front of the TV. The kid's always been a perfectionist and um, he knows what he likes, and if he likes it, he wants to go get it, and it, he does whatever he has to to, to make sure he uh, succeeds in anything he does, and I think that's what's happening now. You know, he just, he found his way into this thing, and he's just, he's evolved, and it's amazing to watch. While school may not have been Logan's cup of tea, his education continues full tilt. Looking beyond the horizon of surf films, he set his sights on creating narrative films as well, with a couple of scripts in the works. Learned a lot from watching Kubrick's movies and learning how his cuts don't necessarily abide only by a narrative structure where his principles can be used in surfing and visually. 
With an eye trained by the rigors of surf photography and a flair for visual storytelling, Marshall is sharpening his writing skills and hoping to carve out a niche in North Carolina's filmmaking industry. And with his level of potential, combined with the support of his family and community, his ceiling is unlimited. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with it. I think it's amazing. I, he, he blows my mind all the time. So I'm just proud of him. It's something I'm studying. I know it's not something that you really learn. It's something that you continue to learn and you can understand how to get better at. It's weird to say, but I feel like Outer Banks might be the best place on the East Coast to create a filmmaker, you know?